She blinked and she was trapped. For mum of three, Tash, it took just three months from meeting the man of her dreams to seeing his true self. Relentless stalking, violence, death threats. It's a storyline we hear too often and ends too often, tragically. But Tash had a guardian angel. He would just call relentlessly, like four or five hours straight, one call after another. Tasha, I'm giving you two minutes to answer your phone, or I swear to God. My phone and then Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat. You're making me very angry and I don't want to do this, but I f I'm on the verge of doing something. With Tash Kramer, he was a monster. But sitting opposite police, he was evasive and belligerent. What is your full name? Throat there, look. Pardon? Throat there in front of you. Gavin Porter, no middle name? No. The Irish national relentlessly stalked his ex-girlfriend, turning a fairy tale into a full-blown living nightmare. There's also allegations made that you had threatened to attend at her home and slit her throat. No comment. I certainly wasn't looking for a relationship, but we just hit it off straight away. About three months into the relationship, the mum from Benalla, northeast of Melbourne, says Gavin Porter became jealous and possessive. He would get drunk and start calling me names, call me fat, call me ugly, tell me to kill myself, um, and then have no recollection the next day. And beg for forgiveness and then it was just a cycle. Gavin would drive past Tash's house, call her constantly and before she knew it, Tash was trapped. I would just do what he asked me to do, like go where he wanted me to go just to keep the peace. He sent her frightening messages, I'm going to make your life hell, I will be making it even, I don't care if your kids are in the house or not either, I'll be there, I'm going to cut your throat. Tash says Gavin's web of control eventually turned violent. It was my own fault for trying to grab his phone, but he punched me in the hip and then choked me on the ground. So do you really blame yourself? I think so. That's what you get for involving yourself with someone like that. Hey. Knocking on her bedroom window, demanding that you come out and see you. Anything you'd like to say about that? No comment. He was relentless. It was multiple times a day. Detective Senior Constable Kim Snedden interrogated Gavin. Checks have been done, which have shown that you've sent these flowers to her. No comment. And then last week you sent her a G's face printed on it. No comment. When I compiled the brief of evidence and had a look, there was over 3,000 text messages alone, uh, let alone the emails to her. I tried many times to end the relationship, but he... He wouldn't have it. I was like a possession to him. At what point does this become a crime? Is it the number of times those threats are made or is this a crime no matter how many times it's said? Yeah, it is. He is there. He's threatened to cut her throat, which she obviously took as a threat to her life. The communication itself was a breach of the intervention order, but obviously the threats alone um, were, were threats to her safety. But the threats Tash feared the most were those Gavin made about an intimate video he recorded without her knowledge. So I advise you strongly to contact me within the next 10 minutes before your father and everyone gets these videos. Did he ever end up doing it? Oh, he posted on his Snapchat story. Seven months after the relationship began, in March last year, police put an interim family violence intervention order in place. Tash says it set Gavin off. He was worried he'd lose his visa. He said... <sighs> Something along the lines of, if he can't have me, nobody else will. After trying to end things, Tash got this birthday card, can't wait until we are back together again, and written on the last page, P.S. How's your windpipe? We're in the back of the car and he, like, um, choked me with his fingers like that. It was a bit of a runny joke with him. Gavin was pressuring Tash to revoke the intervention order. 
the magistrate asked me whether I was happy for the order to stay for a year. I agreed. Within a minute of me agreeing to the order, um, my phone started ringing and Gavin was making threats to come to my work. I just felt like I couldn't protect my kids anymore and that they'd be better off if I wasn't around, so I drove to the train tracks. We spent probably an hour looking for her. Senior Constable Zach Clark found Tash in bushes beside the train line. That was the moment the mum finally began to let police in. Emotional, clearly. And we took her back to the police station and sort of tried to calm her down and, and get a story from her. Gavin couldn't cope with rejection, inflicting more terror on the mum while she was sleeping here with her children. Tash says she woke up to Gavin tapping on her window. She ran to the kitchen, grabbed a knife, locked the children inside and then had the courage to run out onto the road in an attempt to keep Gavin away from her kids. Thankfully I lived close to the police station and they got there pretty quickly, um, but unfortunately they couldn't catch him. While he was on the run, Gavin taunted Tash with this picture message. We shout out to all at Benalla Police Station, hashtag keep on trying. He was getting quite desperate in what he was doing and we had no idea where it might end. But at this hotel in Melbourne's CBD, Tash's nightmare did come to an end last November. He was arrested when we became aware that he'd flown from Western Australia back into Victoria and within 40 minutes he was in custody. Hi, good to see you. Good to see you. She got out of my life and gave me my freedom back. Sounds like she saved your life. Gavin Porter was sentenced to two years jail. He'll be deported once he's served his time. Oh, a lot of awful memories attached to this house. Um, I experienced some of my darkest times here. Tash has now packed up her life in Benalla, moved towns, leaving a job she loved. For a fresh start, just to get my life back, I think. In moving houses, what do you hope for your future? Just want the kids and I to be happy and to be safe, that's it. And this brave mum has a message. Let police help. I resisted for such a long time and it made things much harder for myself and they're there to help. You're so brave to share your story, Tash. Thank you. And as she stressed, there is help available if you or someone you know is experiencing sexual abuse or family violence. Call 1800-RESPECT. That's 1800-737-732.